All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, we're going to examine this video right here that is on TikTok. Now, I'm going to play it for you, and then I'm going to share some of the thoughts I have. Stop doing evil, though. Absolutely. Is that not blasphemy, though? Because the only person from which many religions believe is free from sin is God. So mm -hmm. they're God, not a God. They're God. And to absolve yourself from sin is basically trying to make yourself godlike. Well, I can't absolve myself from sin. I have to ask the question, is God interested in forgiving me? And Jesus Christ said yes. And Christ said, that's why I bled and died on a cross, to take the penalty that you deserve, Cliff, for your wrongdoing, thereby offering you forgiveness. Two university students in Australia, good buddies. One graduating became a judge, the other graduating became a banker. One day the bank was arrested for embezzlement of $1 million. He was to be tried before his buddy, the judge. A lot of speculation in the press. Would the judge throw the book at his buddy to prove what a just judge he was? Or would he let his buddy off scot-free because he was his buddy? jury deliberated, they passed the sentence, guilty. The judge stood up and delivered the harshest fine possible against his buddy, the banker. Everybody gasped in amazement, but then everybody watched in wonder as the judge stood up, took off his judge's robe, extended his hand to his buddy and said, but friend, I have just sold my house, I've taken all of my savings out of my bank account, and I'm going to pay the fine that I just leveled against you. The judge was just, and he was loving. Merciful. That's what Jesus Christ revealed about God. God is just and he's also loving. And that's why Christ went to the cross. Alright, okay. So that that's a great story right there. And uh, there, I don't see anything wrong with the particular story. However, uh, if I were to be picky, if I were to nitpick, a little bit the young man asked the question is that not blasphemy though uh, in the context of not doing any evil and being God is here at this 18 second mark he says is basically trying to make yourself God like all right so let me play that again that first 20 seconds do you try to stop doing evil though absolutely is that not blasphemy though because the only person from which many religions believe is free from sin is God so mm -hmm. they're God not a God they're God and to absolve yourself from sin basically trying to make yourself godlike yeah no uh, that's a great question and the response is great but if I were being picky I would say this response that Cliff that Cliff gives is a response that he's given many times and doesn't actually address directly the question that the young man asked to absolve yourself from sin is basically trying to make yourself God like alright so I want to address that alright so the question uh, because I mean it's interesting uh, you know just the other day I read it's like two days ago I read John chapter 10 and we're gonna look at this in John chapter 10 and uh, Jesus uh, the Jews were looking to kill the Lord Jesus and then the Jews took up stones again to stone him Jesus answered them many good works have I showed you from my father for which of those works do ye stone me 
The Jews answered, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, Ye are gods? If he called them gods un unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemies, blau, blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. All right, so this is a, a great chapter. It really is. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. All right, so God is in Jesus, and Jesus is in God. Now, keep that in mind. All right, so first of all, um, oh, goodness. Um, so first of all, let me find it. First of all, in... Psalm 82, this is where we get that phrase, ye are God. So there's six, or I'm sorry, eight verses. I'm going to read it for you. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and far fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Re rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Alright, so I want to I want to get into this a little bit more. Alright? It, because it's interesting. I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. So are we that are the children of the Most High, are we gods? So I want you to consider this, okay? Consider a couple of things here. Let's first start in... Um, let's start here in John 14 he that has my commandments this is Jesus speaking at that day you shall know that I am in the Father and ye in me and I in you he that has my commandments and keeps them he it is that loves me and he that loves me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him now think about that God was manifest in the flesh so when Jesus manifest himself into us we have God in us we are gods now you might think well how can we be gods if we're not perfect 
right? If, if we're still in this sinful body, well, of course, we are not made complete yet. We are only in spirit in God, not in the flesh, because our flesh will perish, but our spirit will endure forever. Now, let's go to John 17. Now, just consider what I'm saying. That's all I ask. Consider this. Jesus says um, that they, in verse 21, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So, the Father is in Jesus, Jesus is in us, we are in the Father, and we are in Jesus Christ, and we are one. We abide in Him, and He abides in us. Alright, so let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. And when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, then, yeah, then we go from being corruptible to incorruptible. We go from being mortal to immortal. All right, so think about it this way. When this time comes, we will be without sin, totally. <clears throat> and so, so we're, there's we're gonna be perfect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We will be without any sin. We'll be in a new body, in a new flesh, a flesh that never perishes. So being without any sin being made perfect, being made whole, are we not gods? I think about that. In Philippians 2, verse 6, who, talking about Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery, to be equal with God. So if Jesus is equal with God, so also will we be equal with God on the day of redemption. Ephesians 4, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. The day of redemption is when we will be changed from corruptible to incorruptible, from mortal to immortal. We will be perfected forever on that day. 